car is staying connected and what the, the impact of autonomous driving and, and what that has for us. So obviously this is something that we're all quite familiar with. We know how things are developing. We know how people and their want to stay connected. We can always just, all we have to do is look in the mirror. Uh, I, I often think that connectivity is something that's not so age dependent as everyone thinks it is. Uh, especially when I see my mother walking around with her cell phone all the time and her saying, well, why can't you just text me that? Why do you have to call me? And so it, it just, it, it, that's, yes, that's what, it, that's what it tells you just how important connectivity is. And really connectivity and the role that it plays because it's the expectation that customers have connectivity and the, the ability to stay connected while they're operating the vehicle. And that's something that plays really into the hands of having a car with some autonomous or semi-autonomous capabilities. And obviously that's, a, that's something where we feel like uh, we're playing a large role and, and we'll see that going forward because these two things go hand in hand. But today I would say staying connected in the car is more of a problem than it is a future. So we see a lot of issues that come about every day and it's a really scary thing. There's some amazing facts that make this part of it. But all in all, obviously, texting and driving, you see this whole distracted driving thing and the impact that it has on people, the number of accidents it's causing. It's a really scary time to, to, to be on the road because you see every day people doing things in cars, not just texting and talking on the phone, but things that are just downright scary. Uh, I was actually using public transportation in Atlanta last Thursday, driving to MARTA. It goes right next to uh, uh, Georgia 400 going north. And I look over and I see a man with an electric shaver shaving as he's driving at 60 miles an hour. It's unbelievable what people do in their cars, and you have a chance to do this when you're, when you're going in a train, and it just blows your mind. And, uh, but this is what people are going to do, and they're going to do it whether they're supposed to or not. There's laws that say you shouldn't do these things, but we've got to know that customers want to do this and, and stay connected. So what we see is obviously, here's what people feel about staying connected, and this is where we look at millennials, because that's the group that we see that is most let's say, digital native. So 37% say they're missing something if they're not on social media. So that's, that's obviously something you feel like time is getting away from you because I look forward to the times where I'm not on any kind of media of any kind. But it's a big deal. 80% of them have texted in the past 24 hours. I don't know how that's not 180% of them. Uh, I, I've texted a thousand times in the, in the last uh, 24 hours and I'm far from a millennial. So we see this, we know this is a big deal of our day. It's how we communicate. Next, this is the one that scares me a little bit, uh, and I think of the movie Her. Do you guys remember that? That was an interesting uh, movie. But 83% uh, of the folks sleep with their mobile phone. I'm assuming that's just by their bed. Um, but it, it's such a big part of everyday life. It's something we don't disconnect ourselves from because it's how we get our news, it's how we talk to people. It's everything, it's, a, it's really a companion. So we see that it needs to be nearby. It's, our, it's probably our alarm clock now. Um, so it's all these things combined into one and that's just gonna get more so. So it's a big part of our life. But the problems that it causes are staggering. This is a stat that I almost cannot believe, but it's really scary. One in four accidents in the US caused by texting and driving. It's probably, if you spend any time on the road, less surprising because you see it every day. I see it, you're stuck at a red light, you're wondering why no one's going, it's because the car in the front, or it's two or three, is doing this. It's, it's constant, and it, it drives you insane. And you see it's a big part of it. So every day we're going to have to start adapting and coming up with solutions that deal with reality. Because reality is people are gonna stay connected, people are gonna wanna be involved, whether the law says they should or not. Because most states have laws that say you can't have a handheld phone, virtually all say you can't text, but it hasn't stopped anyone from doing it. So something that we've got to keep in mind as a manufacturer. Another thing just to think about what we call distracted driving. More than 3,000 deaths, 431,000 injuries, a huge part of, of the, the fatalities that go on in, the, in everyday life. It also, what it not only lends to just uh, accidents, but the traffic that, that stems from that, the emissions that come from that. It's an interesting cycle if you look at and understand just what distracted driving does. When we say distracted, this means everything you can do in a car, from texting, talking on the phone, putting on eyeliner, shaving, uh, you name it, changing radio stations. Everything is considered distracted driving. But the reason texting is particularly challenging is because it takes three facets. You're looking with your eyes, you're thinking with your mind, and you're doing something physical. Very few others take so much of your cognitive ability, but when you're texting, you are completely checked out. And when you're driving at 55 miles an hour, you look down at your phone three, four, five seconds, you've traveled the length of a football field without ever looking up. 
that's pretty scary. And uh, so a lot of things can happen. A lot of people can change their mind about where they want to be in front of you or behind you or beside you based on that time frame. So something really interesting to think about. I love this stat where, you know, it's like you ask any probably man particularly, are you a good driver? Oh, hell yes, I'm a great driver, of course, look at me. I know I'm an okay driver. Rob Moran's a really good driver. I've, I've dri driven with him several times, so you're one I like to drive with. But So ask somebody, can they manage texting and driving? Don't you love that? Of course you can't, but everyone thinks they can. Adults, 77%, probably 90% of men, and 55% uh, of teenagers. That's a pretty scary thing. None of us can. We think we can. I, I just don't care what you're doing. You can drive however way you're the best driver in the world. But driving safely has very little to do with actual driving skill. Many of us have the driving skill, but sometimes few of us spend 100% of our cognitive ability on what's going on in front of us. That's where accidents happen. So the good news, millennials who have to stay connected and want to be sleeping with their phone, 60% are already saying that they're interested in driverless technology. So this is something, again, they're letting someone take the wheel, they're embracing this, and this is the direction things are going. Most importantly, what we see today in cars, it's not that it's taking away the driving ability. We're not looking to take away your drive through Laurel Canyon, because no one wants to give that up. We're looking to say, all right, in traffic, parking, bumper to bumper, that's the part where, hey, if you could check out, I'm pretty sure every one of us would. That's the direction we want to take it because there's a place for letting someone else take the wheel and there's a place where I will fight you to take the wheel because there's, you know, driving is still an, an exciting experience probably for every one of us in the room because that's why we're in the business we're in. So it's something that we see going that direction. It's a huge trend. So we know that's something that we've got to address. Obviously, more congestion, more cars on the road, more time in our cars, more accidents. So many times we spend so much time in the car and we burn three billion gallons of gasoline stopped in traffic every year. So it's a pretty unbelievable amount you think about, but obviously we've got technology that can help us with that. If there's technology that says, all right, you can avoid traffic jams or the car can shut off or you can just not go at that time. There's a lot of things that are on the, the not so far horizon that will help us there. But it's pretty amazing. 4.2 billion spend you know, hours in traffic annually. That's an amazing amount of wasted time, wasted productivity. If you could have this time back, what would you give for it? I would pay a lot of money to get my time back that I spent commuting. And then you, you see that much of that is just because of accidents. A quarter of the time, I feel like it's even more than that because anytime I'm in a traffic jam, there's usually a siren or there's usually a car parked smashed on the side of the road but it's a, it's a pretty clear stat. You think about what causes these accidents, it's typically what I mentioned earlier, it's not a lack of driver skill, it's you've lost attention, you're not paying attention. It happens to us every day, the best drivers, there's two seconds where you look away, you're distracted by something, someone moves in front of you and you, have, you could potentially have a problem, you're slamming her on the brakes or hopefully you're driving a Mercedes Benz and the car stops for you. But those are all things that are real. Human error, it's part of the day. It happens to all of us. None of us are perfect. 90% of the road accidents are caused by that. The rest is mechanical failure, small things like that. But it tells you that just about every accident that happens on the road is controllable and avoidable. So that's what we're looking to do because accident-free driving, you could imagine that what we could prevent is 90%. I sort of put those stats hand in hand because that's where the human error comes in. So the good news, here it is. If just half the cars on the road were autonomous, you'd save nearly 10,000 lives every year and nearly 2 million fewer crashes. This is the direction we like to think we're going, and this is in the not too distant time horizon. So this is the part of autonomous driving that I can convince the most hardcore driver who never wants to relinquish any control, it's a pretty easily convinced story. So I know I'm right there, but the road to driverless uh, driving is something that Mercedes-Benz has long been a pioneer. Uh, it's something we've talked about a lot with the E-Class, but it goes all the way back to the late 90s. The first S-Class was the first use of radar systems in the car, so a proximity-based cruise control system using radar, our Distronic system. We then upgraded that with several other systems. We've added night view assist. We added that back in 2005 with the, the next generation S-Class uh, using uh, all sorts of technology to see ahead and see things that you as a driver can't see. Autonomous emergency braking by a pre-safe brake 
happened in 2006. Attention assist, basically distracted driving or drowsy driving, that's, that's worse, that's a bigger problem than, than even drunk driving. That's something we addressed all the way back in 2009 because we see that as a, as a big potential to avoid accidents. Active blind spot and lane keeping assist systems in 2010, and then we combined all that. So we took the lateral capability of the cars to stop and go and brake, and then we added the, the ability to move laterally and the, the ability for steering to bring control into the car. So really those two systems com coming together, this was really the confluence of a lot of different technologies, but mainly radar and cameras. So stereo cameras, stereoscopic cameras using two cameras to see in three dimensions in the road ahead, which gives you not only the ability to see and understand what's happening, but what might happen next. So seeing in 3D is so important in enabling all these technologies to work as well as they do. So let's look ahead a little bit. Obviously the E-Class is a, a very forward-thinking car. Every generation of the E-Class has moved us a step forward, not just Mercedes-Benz, but the entire industry. But we have a lot of technology in this car, which we feel like is really the next step in semi-autonomous and moving into autonomous driving, probably at what we would call level three, and even looking forward to what we could do in the future at level four autonomous driving. So obviously our drive pilot Distronic system upgraded even higher speed uh, capabilities, more capabilities in seeing with the camera, lane markings using guardrails, using other cars as reference points, a lot of things that you need. You've got to understand every step of the way we've got to add these things in order to make the systems work better. Steering pilot, even more capability. Again, seeing with outlines, using other reference points in the road to guide you. Um, using steering pilot now to help you with an evasive action. Why wouldn't you do that? You can see that there's a person maybe in the road at certain speeds, you initiate, the car will help you turn even faster. So really amazing technology here. Active lane change assist. This is another first with the E-Class. Some of you have already used it, but basically you just execute a lane change like you would normally, and the car takes over the passing maneuver for you. You execute the lane change the same way going back. Just using the turn signal, you could essentially do this with your hands off the wheel. The car will take over because it's using radar and camera to see what's going on around you. Really a 360 degree view of what's happening to execute that safe lane change. Active brake assist with cross traffic function. Something that now, if you're using cameras to look ahead, why wouldn't you also look around the bend? So we've really stretched out the capabilities of the car to the maximum of the visual horizon. The next horizon is really car to X when we think about the telematics horizon. And that's something that gets really interesting because then you're able to see miles ahead of what's going on and prepare to either go a different direction, maybe stay at home until the traffic clears, but you have a lot more options as you move that way. So evasive steering assistant, I mentioned this one earlier, and then with this app development, it's really the connected car and the capabilities at the telematics horizon that really take us to that further level because you really can get predictive value. You then can change, imagine being able to change traffic patterns based on knowing what's going on. After you have to give credit, Waze is already doing this in a way. You think about how much different, how many everyone's connected, you're able to make decisions based on what's going on miles ahead of you and those can help you every day either get somewhere sooner, feel better about it, or avoid a traffic situation altogether. So, so many things happening in the connected space and the best part about talking about that here is we're in the greatest place you could be t possibly talking about it. It's really at the hub of where so much of this technology is happening. Uh <laughs>